If you shoot deep sky astrophotography, flat frames can be your best friend. Flats are used to correct the vignetting and the uneven field illumination created by dust or smudges on your camera sensor or anywhere else along your optical train. In this video, I'll tell you how to take successful flat frames with your DSLR or dedicated astronomy camera. It's important that you do not remove your camera from your telescope or lens and to keep the existing focus that you shot your light frames in. Unlike shooting dark frames, the temperature of your flats makes no difference whatsoever. Just like anything else in the uh, astrophotography world, there are a number of ways to go about shooting flat frames, but I think this way is probably just about the easiest. Since I'll be stacking these flat frames into Deep Sky Stacker, it would be wise to listen to what they have to say on how to best go about this. And what it recommends in the manual is to use a plain white t-shirt and stretch it over the objective of the telescope and point that towards a bright light. I've gotten some excellent results using the white t-shirt method. Out of all the light sources, I've found that uh, pointing towards the dawn blue sky uh, to be the most effective. Once you're pointed at this even light source with the flat t-shirt over the objective, it's just a matter of, uh, with a DSLR camera, uh, setting it to AV mode so it selects the proper exposure for you, or with a dedicated astronomy camera like the CMOS 183C, it's all about getting that target ADU range. So after a night of shooting, you've got your DSLR camera in the same position it was in taking your light frames. You'll leave the ISO speed as it was, whether that be ISO 800, 1600, leave that as is, switch from manual mode to AV mode. This is going to take a very fast exposure, uh, so it's just going to be a press of the button and it'll be a quick like one four thousandth of a second uh, flat frame exposure. Okay, so I've got my t-shirt on and I'm pointed towards uh, the morning sky, although in this case, to be honest, it's actually about one in the afternoon and it's a very cloudy day, so not ideal conditions for flats, but uh, you get the idea. So I'm going to take my uh, exposure here in AV mode. As you can see, it was a very quick frame, and if you saw what that frame looked like there, it's going to look just like a kind of a pink or bluish purplish frame, kind of a soft color. It was a very quick exposure. And uh, if you looked at it closely, you would see a bit of the, uh, the vignetting around the circles and any dust in, on your sensor. And uh, that's, a, that's a good flat frame. The reason it happens to look a little reddish purple is because I've got that Skytech CLS CCD filter in there. So it's, uh, it's filtering out the, the normal color of the sky with that kind of reddish filter. Like I said earlier, these aren't exactly ideal conditions for taking flats, but if you had a look at the histogram there, that's generally what you're, you'll want the histogram to look like for a flat frame. If you're shooting with a dedicated astronomy camera like the Wendy D3C or a CCD camera, uh, you don't have that uh, luxury of having that quick AV mode to shoot the perfect flat, but the same principles apply and your flat frames will want to look the same as they do in a DSLR, the same style of histogram. So how you accomplish that? I like to use astrophotography tool. Uh, there is a function called the flats aid wizard and basically it takes you through a series of test exposures to kind of find that sweet spot of the perfect flat frame. And the, uh, the great thing is once it's set up you have that wizard saved uh, and you can keep using the flats aid result every time you need to shoot new flats. So very simple once you go through that initial stage of uh, testing it out and getting the perfect flat. It's real easy and quick to shoot flat frames at the end of your imaging session. Uh, if you're lucky enough to be able to leave your gear kind of running all night and do this kind of stuff in the morning, uh, that's very convenient. 
Uh, otherwise, you'll need to look into using a different light source, uh, like a flat box. One great option uh, being used by an excellent astrophotographer, um, Eric, who shoots with a, uh, a reflector Newtonian. He got a uh, like an artist tracing box uh, on Amazon, very affordable, and uh, I think actually a lot cheaper than like the the official light flat boxes. And it's been working really well for him, and he's got that big eight inch. Uh, Newtonian tube, so you can imagine for a, my little 102, it would completely cover it. Uh, so I'll add a, a link to that product. Um, also, uh, ways to get that uh, that histogram down and to get the exposures dimmer, you can always add another layer of t-shirt down to get that right. So uh, it's kind of trial and error. Uh, the good news is once you do finally start getting those good flats, you'll know exactly what to look for and you'll be able to get those consistently every time. You do want to shoot them after every session because the little dust in your sensor or on your objective can be moving around uh, and to cancel that out you'll need to capture exactly how it was when you shot your light frames. Anyways, uh, I hope this was useful to you. Uh, I remember a time when uh, I had no idea how to shoot flat frames, so hopefully for those people, uh, you know how to do it now. Clear skies.